Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to my taxonomy class. The topic for today's discussion is typification in taxonomy. Here we are going to study about the different type methods or typification. Typification or type method is one of the principle for the nomenclature of species. So it is intricately related with the procedure of naming a particular species. This is also known as type method. A nomenclatural type or typus is that element to which the name of a taxon is permanently attached, whether as the correct name or as a synonym. The nomenclatural type is not necessarily the most typical or representative element of a taxon. So what does this imply? It says that the name of the taxon is permanently attached, but it need not be the typical representative element of a taxon. So now we are going to come to the individual types. So let's start with holotype. A holotype is the one specimen used by the author or designated by the author as the nomenclatural type. So holotype is that specimen which is used by the author and designated by him as the nomenclatural type. As long as the holotype is extant, it fixes the application of the name concerned. It is essential to designate a holotype when publishing new species. So it's extremely important to designate a holotype, especially when publishing new species. Next, coming to isotype. An isotype is any duplicate of the holotype. So you can say an isotype is a copy of the holotype. It is always a specimen. It is collected from the same locality at the same time and by the same person as the holotype. Next, coming to syntype. A syntype is any specimen cited in the protologue when there is no holotype. So this is something important. When there is no holotype, we talk about syntype. Hmm. So a syntype is a specimen that is cited in the protologue when there is no holotype or any one of the two or more specimens simultaneously designated as types. The term is relevant for names published in old times when the type concept did not yet exist and when authors occasionally cited or illustrated the specimen that they used. Right? Next, coming to paratype or cotypes. Paratypes are also known as cotypes. A paratype or cotype is a specimen other than isotype or holotype cited in the protologue that is neither the holotype nor an isotype. So this is neither a holotype nor an isotype, nor one of the syntypes if two or more specimens were simultaneously designated as types. It is usually, it usually provides information additional to holotype. All right. Then coming to lectotype. A lectotype is a specimen designated from the original material as the nomenclatural type if no holotype was indicated at the time of publication or if it is missing or if it is found to belong to more than one taxon. In lectotype designation, an isotype must be chosen if such exists or otherwise a syntype is such a syntype if such exists. Correct? 
then we talk about neotype a neotype is a specimen selected to serve as nomenclatural type if no original material is extant or as long as it is missing when a holotype or a previously designated lectotype has been lost or destroyed and it can be shown that all the other original material differs taxonomically from the destroyed type a new type may be selected to preserve the usage established by the previous typification so it is basically used when the holotype or a previously designated lectotype is found no more either it is lost or destroyed okay then we come to epitype an epitype is a specimen selected to serve as an interpretative type when the holotype lectotype or previously designated neotype or all original material associated with a validly published name is demonstrably ambiguous and cannot be critically identified for purposes of the precise application of the name of a taxon okay see when an epitype is designated the holotype lectotype or neotype uh, that the epitype supports must be explicitly cited since it only has standing as long as that type of that type is accepted an epitype is often selected when additional information on a species becomes available later on like the like curical characters when so far only leaf gross morphology was known okay so this is how we come to an end of our lecture this was a brief study of type methods and taxonomy you you got to remember these terms along with its correct meaning or description these are all similar sounding terms so please don't get confused with these terms and their meanings please study them more than learning it up by heart try to understand the meaning and this will help you to remember the meaning of these terms better till then thank you so much goodbye